Okay, good evening to everyone. It's still uh, December 7, 3 out of 3. And we are so delighted to have our Will Swiss Karateka Lalipo Joy Vignano once again. Fresh from uh, uh, training at uh, Dojo. Just a follow up to our first one exactly a year ago. And we will get to summarize what is happening right now during the past year, 2022. Hi, Lalipo, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Hello, Paul. <laughs> All right. And thank you so much. It's so honored to you. Uh, to order to have you again on our Young Karateka Discovery on our Zoom session here on Sports Corner PH. But let's get things down first. How are you doing right now in Switzerland? I know you have been finished training inside your, the dojo that you have trained. Um, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm still in training. I have practice at maybe in 40 minutes again um yeah i'm doing good <laughs> okay let's uh, summarize first your moments that made you impact during your karate career in this year that there are many podium finishes and recognitions that you have won i have to clarify first how many competitions both locally or nationally in switzerland and even the international ones this year and out of many of those you got some medal finishes there um, I'm not sure how many medals I've won this year, actually. Um, I would, if I have to guess, I would say about 20, about, around 20 medals, maybe. So 20 medals in all competitions you have joined up. Many of them, uh, plus you win. International ones, including the one in Indonesia that you have competed the uh, uh, last month, and one of those highlights of your competition of your competition season was your last two competitions for this year, which is the K1 Series A in Jakarta and the Swiss Championships. But before that, I was your training regimen for those two respective journeys and the program being guided by the coaches as well. Um, my training has been good. We switched it up because we saw where I have to improve more, so we tried to improve in strength and I've seen a lot of progress ever since and we basically focused on techniques and strength the past few months and we also went to Japan to um, get ready for this year's world championships which was in Konya in October yeah and of course it's a great help for you that you went back to Okinawa as you mentioned for a series of training camps with your former dojo, which is going to be a great big boost to further improve your quality of your game in international competitions, just like World Championships and even Karate One Series A. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the Series A, can you break us to, to us your thoughts on your performance? It seems you have, that you are happy with your outcome, but not as good as was before as you only reach until the third round of the competition and did not advance into the medal rounds, the succeeding rounds. What is your take on your performance during the Series A in Indonesia? Um, overall, I'm really happy with my performance, knowing I just came back from the World Championships, being a little bit disappointed about the result. Um, Overall, the competition was pretty good, like organization wise, it was not that hectic. Um, I felt really prepared for the competition itself. Um, yeah, I had a good surrounding. I was able to have a small training with the Philippine people, which is very helpful also to keep to boost my motivation. Um, yeah, I felt really good on the tatami. It was a little rough knowing I placed last in the third round in my group, but it will motivate me for next year. With this great outlook and a, uh, at least you got the top 10 uh, finish in the uh, Karate One Series A, did you optimistic that with the right training, focus, and concentration, you will be, be prevailed against the odds and aiming for a much higher finishes in international tilts come 2023. Um, yeah, I think it's all about 
how I prepare myself and how I prepare mentally for the competition. So I think it'll be good. It also took place last month is the Swiss Championships, which is the national tournament for karate of Switzerland. Can you provide us with your thoughts on your match? How do you prepare physically and mentally for it? And on that match where you scored its nine consecutive title in under 21 or juniors, back to back with a first title in the elite where you debuted for. Um, preparation wise, I just came back from Jakarta, so I was a little jet lagged. Um, but I tried to get back to training and make sure I feel prepared and well rested for the national championship since it was like the high peak of my season. Um, during the competition, I just made sure that I stayed by myself. I was not going around or trying to get nervous or look at other points. I was more looking, I was looking for myself so I can stay focused. Um, Point-wise, it was lower than expected, but it's pretty normal in Switzerland. So I was just glad that I scored higher in every round than the other athletes. Um, as soon as I got my ninth title, I was really happy and also won in the elite category. That was also like a huge um, success and also a huge peak in my season and I couldn't be happier. In relation to this, how do you adjust with the techniques that you will be using as a judge in the tempo for the competition in Switzerland? And how tough it was to compete against those top rank kata experts in both categories that you have joined with? Um, personally, I've been in the kata like industry in Switzerland for a long time. So um, my points have been high or low and I think it's just it's just because of the um judges here but for me it's like as soon uh, as long as the WKF referees in Switzerland give me a good score I think I'm on the right, right path and you're on the right track for you to uh conquer those uh, international and uh, of course national competitions it's huge so you have won the titles it's Lani personality by this domination as the top female kata expert in Switzerland in both under 21 and elite. Are you satisfied that you ended up with a double gold medal round? And of course, there's always many room for improvements to work on and to pursue more exposures, more to better be uh, improve your ranking and of course your finishes in uh, those competitions. Um, I'm very satisfied with my result. Of course, there's a lot to improve still for next year's competition, um, which next year my first competition will be in Athens in January. So I can build up from what I, how I performed at nationals, also how I performed in Jakarta. And I think I can like go up and aim higher next year. Okay, so aside from that uh, first week, why, by the way, is it a, kata, a Karate One Series A or Premier League? Yung sa... uh, series A. Okay, so Series A is in January in Athens. And then what else? What are the next competitions for Lani for scheduled for this year? It will be the uh, European Championships, the Swiss Championships, and the Karate WKF uh, Chap World Championships, and the Karate One. Um, next year, uh, the selections for European Championships, the junior ones in February, aren't out yet. So I'm aiming to select for that that will be in February, like two or three weeks after Athens. I won't be attending in the Premier League in Cairo in January to prepare for Junior European Championships in February. Um, after that, it will probably be the Youth League in Spain and the first qualification tournament for Swiss Championships. And while you're preparing for those competitions that you have mentioned earlier, are you going to continue training at the dojo? Because we are spending the holiday season uh, taking rest, but uh, 
you guys are gonna continue working on to train art and to play art for those competitions. And what are the passing marks that your coaches do on your improvements in your style of play in karate? Um, our dojo is open during the holiday season, especially because I have to prepare for the competitions. Um, coach wise, uh, it's more we're looking forward to improve and make sure my performance is getting stronger um, than it was before. Um, yeah, that's pretty much how we're trying to schedule it right now. Okay, so while in Indonesia, you also managed to meet your uh, future teammates, hopefully from the Philippines, including Joko Vasquez, Rika Torres, and the rest of the uh, Kata experts there. And the president of the Karate Filipinas, Chian Wigilim, what was your perspective of that meeting and those uh, trainings with the, the Philippine teammates? And is any plans to play in the Philippines soon in a full swing? Um, it was a great experience and also a huge um, pleasure to meet them and to train with them. They are all really good athletes and like very like nice and open people. Um, Meeting all of them was, like, it was a good thing. I felt like I'm surrounded by great athletes, strong athletes, and also, like, very nice people. Um, overall, I can tell they are also very hardworking, also being a proud Pinoy. And, yeah, um, I am planning to trying to maybe go to the Series A in 2024, if I'm not wrong. Um, we will see because of my ranking if I can still attend, but that will be the next time I will go back to the Philippines. How meaningful for you to have a great support system of your coach, your parents, in order to bring pride and honor for your country in Switzerland and, of course, the motherland of your parents, which is the Philippines? Um, the support system is very important to me to make sure, like, I know I can have, I have people that are, that stand behind me. But it's more, I feel like if it's, it ha everything has to coordinate together, so... Um, it's very important to have a support system, to have people that support you, um, that you know you can talk to people. Um, about representing the countries, I feel like it's a great and big honor to represent Switzerland as a Filipino girl because I'm presenting two different countries. Um, I try to make sure to let people see that I'm from these, uh, that I enjoy presenting the two countries. Let you like the question natin before we head into the last question. What are your other things that you are doing while taking time to do karate full time right now, especially traveling in different parts of the world and for study? Um, currently, I am still in schools or college, pretty much. Um, I regularly study, go to school, may, uh, have my exams. I should finish next summer. And after that, I try to study again. Um, just making sure I can manage all of it with traveling that much and making sure I still can keep up with school. Okay, so lastly, what are your most thankful for you as your 2022 journey comes to an end, the diary closes its book, and you have a great successful victories on your end as you finish 2022 song? Um, I am grateful for every experience I've had this whole year. Um, there were many ups and many downs. Um, super thankful for everyone who supports me, my parents, my whole family, um, few friends that are always here for me to make sure I'm 
doing my best. I'm also thankful for myself to keep up with all of it because sometimes it can get hard and not that motivating, but I'm thankful overall having a dojo, having a home where I can live and like family members that support me overall. Um, also happy with my performance and seeing how I developed the, this whole year actually. And also very thankful for Sakumoto Sensei in Japan and all my friends there and dojo members. Yeah. Again, we'd like to thank Lalibur for joining us. It was a well said. I know you are in rush now because you have to resume training afterwards, but nevertheless, thankful kami sa pagsamin niyo sa amin. And we know it would be a great 2023 for you. Just keep it up and keep doing. So, magpoto po na tayo. Thumbs up and smile for our regular photo. One, two, three. Okay, it's your turn, Lani Bird, to say your appreci thanks, uh, appreciation message and thanks to all your supporters, the sponsors, and those who believe in your campaign. Uh, salamat po sa whole support and support overall, especially to my parents and sponsors that have been keeping up with me and um, traveling with me, supporting me, and also my friends who are here for me to listen if I need someone. Um, also very thankful for the dojo for all the opportunities I had this whole year, um, training, meeting new people, um, also developing every single day or getting better. Um, just a huge thank you to everyone. Pretty much I can't be more grateful because I feel like I need a good support system to keep up with everything because every, uh, a lot is going on um next to karate so i'm really thankful for everyone are you i mean i have uh, another question before we wrap up are you uh, gonna have plans to visit the country someday for just a vacation and maybe to inspire many karate practitioners or the younger ones to try karate through some clinics or seminars if you are gonna invite it in the country um, if I ever get invited to give training or seminar or to be a part of it, I would definitely um, try and motivate, motivate people to keep it up and get better every day. So, yeah, I would probably. And appreciate your support to us. Appreciate your uh, greatness and, of course, your uh acceptance for the invitation to talk to you well deserved Teresa we look forward for a brighter year 2023 for you not in your karate career and of course your studies and in your personal life Naren. and of course we are proud to have you to support you by uh, giving uh, some uh, posts on our page to inspire many Filipinos to pursue karate and of course to bring honor to our country, not just in Switzerland, but also in the country as well. So we are thankful for you, for your support, and for guidance as well. And see you around on our next interview, maybe next year as we Bye-bye. Yes. Salamat po. Ingat Thank you. Maraming salamat. Bye-bye. Thank you po.